ready. Uh, the transcription just started, so we're, we're ready to go. Excellent. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, today is the July 18th meeting of the Criminal Justice Commission. My name is Paul Solomon. I am the newly appointed chair. Um, thank you, uh, fellow commissioners, for your uh, kind, uh, encouraging remarks. I look forward to serving in this role and the opportunity to work with you all and the staff at the CJC around the important work um, that we have uh, in front of us today. Um, first item on the agenda is public comment. Do we have anybody signed up for public comment this morning? I was unmuted and muted myself. Uh, we do not have anyone signed up for public comment as of this time. Um, and I wasn't sure, Chair, if you wanted to take roll um, as well once we oh, yep, finish let's public go comment. Ahead. Yep, let's go ahead and do that. Great. Um, Commissioner Augsir? Not hearing him. Commissioner Beach? Present. Commissioner Bovet? Present. Commissioner Freeman? I'm here today. Uh, Commissioner Przanski? I have not seen him. Uh, Commissioner Lewis. No, uh, and Chair Solomon. Here. And we do have a quorum for proceeding. Um, I have reached out to Commissioner Augsir. I'm actually wondering if this meeting invite did not get to his new employer. Mm. <laughs> now that I've thought about it for a moment. But well, you know how to get a hold of his new employer, I think. Yes, so. I, we do. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully we can control him to get in. But we do have a, a quorum to move forward. Indeed, great. Um, first item on the agenda is the burn grant modifications. Uh, Ryan, I believe you're going to present on that. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Morning. Pull up my screen. OK, do you see my slide with burn justice? I do. Excellent. Very good. Um, so, as the slide entails, I'm presenting to you on a couple of modifications to our Everburn Justice Assistance Grant. Um, as you know, we are the state administering agency for this grant in Oregon, and um, we take in a fiscal award each and every year. Today, we're talking about the fiscal uh, year award for 2019. I know it seems like a long time ago, but if you recall, we had some delays in the ability to use, utilize the funds several years back. And so we are working through that process now. The 2019 grant was mostly applied towards specialty courts and utilized for the 2123 special court grant program up until this point. Back in February, we did an assessment of spending and found that there was underspending in the specialty courts. Um, if you recall, we then did a process for the specialty courts to uh, request supplemental funding to help us spend down this JAG funds. And then once we were left with the remainder, we came forward, um, or we're coming forward to you today with a couple of modifications. So special courts will be continued in the, to finish what they need to finish the 21 or at this point have finished the 21-23 biennium. The remaining funds is what we are looking to allocate to two new recipients. And so I have two presentations or two um, modifications to prevent, present to you. You can take the vote after each, or you could vote for them um, together when you're done. I'll leave that up to you, Chair. And so the first recommend or first um, modification that we are proposing, if I can get my slides to cooperate with me. There we are is a uh, an award of, of roughly two hundred thousand dollars to the oregon judicial department we in speaking with them about opportunity this opportunity one of the areas that they would like to utilize additional funding for is to work on primarily towards translation services for all the specialty courts across the state that's specific to court documents things like participant manuals handbooks other pieces of important documentation um, that go out to participants and making sure that those are available in additional languages um, for participants that uh, I, I look at my notes. I also that also includes um, many of the um, the agreements that are signed by participants as they um, agree to and enter into specialty court. Additionally, there are some challenges uh, throughout the state and the specialty courts with staff and just having 
technology um, and the ability to operate in real time in the courtroom as opposed to going back to um, utilizing a, a desktop computer or in some cases utilizing a, a cell phone or a mobile device. And so they additionally have some technology requests that they would utilize to provide to OGD staff throughout the state um, to, to support the operations of those courts. These funds then would be are both kind of I guess the, the application of these funds are both being determined based on an assessment done by OJD as to where the need is, um, is this, where the need is most, and then working on a scale process from there. For example, with translation services, they are they've done a survey to determine who has what documents and to what need uh, throughout the specialty courts. Any questions about the OJD modification? Questions. Right, let's um, take these one at a time. Um, if there are no questions or for further discussion, I would um, entertain uh, a motion to approve the recommendation. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. All right, there's a motion from Commissioner Beach, uh, seconded by Vice Chair Bovet. All those in favor, or actually, do you want to do the roll call, um, Ken, or? Yes, I'd, I'd, does it? Yeah. I'd be happy to, uh, Chair. Um, Commissioner Beach? Yes. Commissioner Bovet? Yes. Commissioner Freeman? Yes. And Chair Solomon? Yes. Uh, that passes unanimously. Great, thank you. All right, Ryan, let's move on to the OPDS. Okay. So our second modification for JAG awards um, is for the Oregon Office of Public State Service, or the Public Defense Services, um, which would be the award of the remainder of this underspending we identified in our assessment. So they have roughly five um, areas in which they'd like to utilize the funds. Um, the screen here is the short version. I'll give you a slightly larger version of each. The first is a is a contract to consult with Moss Adams to explore, as it as it states here, a five year plan, and um, a five year plan to reduce the disparities in representation and align with the uh, the state's provision of public services and its court with its current caseloads and or anticipated caseloads. Second is a week-long immersive training intended for new public defense attorneys. It would be provided to attorneys statewide, focuses on fundamentals. Um, this is, it's known or it's, it's a particular training known as Gideon's Promise. The third is a contract in which there'll be some consultation work and some associated training as it relates to data collection and data surveying with the Southern Methodist University's Decent Criminal Justice Reform Center. Uh, they do would conduct two different needs assessments or surveys related to data, provide guidance then to staff on developing state data standards and metrics, as well as then the related training necessary for involved attorneys as well as agency staff. Uh, fourth, or may I was going to say last, fourth on the list is uh, stipends for students working in public defense sector this summer. It's an effort to to bolster both you know retention, recruitment and retention within the with the ranks of, of public defense services. Uh, the idea is to not only reduce the burdens, but also attract interns into the public defense work, particularly in the coastal, rural, and frontier counties of Oregon. And then lastly, a request for supplies for staff um, in throughout the state. Um, again, computers, mobile devices, and associated equipment. You're on mute, sir. Sorry about that. Um, any questions for Ryan about this? And I see that we have Autumn Shree from OPDS here too. I don't know, Autumn, if there's anything you want to add to the descriptions of um, these items. No, I think that um, Ryan did a great job, so happy to answer any questions, but I didn't have anything to add. Great. Uh, uh, Vice Chair Bovet. 
I'm wondering, um, Ryan or or maybe OPDS could uh, flesh out a little bit more about the stipends for the students. Are we talking about like certified law students or or how how will this actually work? I only ask because I'm painfully aware of the shortage of defense attorneys in Oregon. It's part of what I have to deal with in court this afternoon, which is why I'm wearing the shirt and tie. So I I'd, I'd, I'd kind of like since the bulk of this or not the bulk of it, but close to half of it is stipends for students. I, I'm just wondering if maybe we could flesh that out a little bit more, explain it a little more. Yeah, I, I, from what I understand for the proposal, it is certified law students, but I will I defer to Autumn if you have any other details you'd like to share. Yes, um, Commissioner Bovet, um, Chair Solomon, uh, the money is to go for law students that mostly are law students. Some of them are actually undergrads. I know that some people were trying to catch them early, um, even before um, they've decided to go to law school. Um, so some people are working as interns and we've kind of priced it out as a tiered system um, when we did the pricing where, you know, people that are um, undergrads would make the least amount. Then there's people that are able to um, do legal work but aren't yet certified. That's another class of people. And then the highest class would be the people that are actually certified law students. There's also some money um, put into this category of people that actually have already graduated from law school, but just are not yet um, uh, certified to take cases as an attorney because they have not yet taken or passed the bar. Um, so there are people working in offices in that position as well. So holding on to them is um, of extra value. We've really set it up so that the firms can use the money how they see fit, um, but within the parameters of it going to these students. And I'll also share, I serve on the OPDS commission that these are strategies that um, have been discussed and, and supported by, by the commission. As we recognize the need to do everything we can on the workforce development front. All right, uh, any other questions? Right, do we have a motion to approve this recommended funding? Don't everybody well, jump at once. Yeah, I'll go ahead and make the motion. I'll, I'll make the motion to approve the staff recommendations for expenditure of the these JAG funds for OPDS services as in the manner outlined by staff. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, Ken, you want to do a uh, roll call? Be my pleasure. Um, and we now have Commissioner Ogzier with us as well, as you can see. So, uh, Commissioner yep. Ogzier, we'll start with you. Uh, yes. Commissioner Beach? Yes. Uh, Vice Chair Bovet? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Freeman? Yes. And Chair Solomon? Yes. That is also a unanimous vote, Chair. Excellent. All right. Um, next up, uh, we have Ian presenting on the Justice Reinvestment Formula uh, Grant Funding Table. Thank you, Chair Solomon. I will go ahead and pull up my PowerPoint here. Um, and I'll start with the first item that I have, and then um, which, as you mentioned, Chair, is the approval of the formula grant funding. Actually, Sorry. before we do that, I apologize. Um, I wanted to go on the record as saying, um, I mentioned that I served on the OPDS Commission, but for that vote, um, and for the sake of transparency, uh, I want to uh, acknowledge my connection to OPDS as a commissioner. Um, I don't have a pecuniary interest. I'm not paid by OPDS, but um, I am uh, an advocate for the work that they do. So uh, let's let the record reflect that. Uh, go ahead, Ian. Thank you. So, um, in accordance with Oregon Administrative Rule, every biennium, the Commission will determine the proportion of grant funds available to each county in accordance with the formula that's used for grant and aid funding for community corrections statewide. 
And so as a result of that, um, we as staff have prepared this formula grant disbursement um, for your consideration and for your approval. As a reminder, um, state rule indicates that each county shall receive a grant award of no less than $100,000 per grant cycle. So while it is a formula allocation, it's not a true formula allocation because there is a floor of $100,000. And so um, this document that uh, we have prepared and sent uh, along to you all as part of the packet in advance is also um, briefly reflected here on the slides. It contains all 36 counties and has a formula breakdown and with it um, broken out in different categories as well for the aid of counties where uh, this document once approved will be sent out to counties for them to build their budgets and i'm happy to answer any questions about this All right any questions for in uh pretty straightforward this is the formula that they use for grant and aid, and um, I know that counties are in the process of working on their um, JRI applications and their CCA applications. So um, good that we're able to get this information out to them. Uh, as I serve on our budget committee, um, you know, we usually just take our percentage um, and apply it to the total allocation until we get this table, which gives us the true numbers. So. Uh, because of the floor that you uh, mentioned. Um, any questions or discussion? Right, would someone like to make a motion to approve uh, the formula allocation table? I'll go ahead and uh, make that motion. Um, I don't think there's any reason. I'll just say from my, my purpose, I don't think there's any reason that each of us have to kind of stand back from each of the individual county allocations because this is just a matter of math right. um, under the statute. So uh, I, I would move to approve um, this particular table that allocates um, uh, these these grant funds in accordance with the statute. This is Freeman. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion from Vice Chair Bovet, seconded by Commissioner Freeman. Uh, Ken, would you take the roll? Uh, certainly. Uh, Commissioner Augsier? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Beach? Yes. Commissioner Bo or Vice Chair Bovet? Yes. Commissioner Freeman? Yes. And Chair Solomon? Yes. Another unanimous vote, Chair. Excellent. We're off to a great start. Uh, next up, we have some amendments to the JRI uh, grant program. Ian. Thank you, Chair Solomon. Um, I have before you two amendments. I'll go through them one by one. Uh, the first one is from Sherman County. They're asking to move, or, and I should pause here. As a reminder, um, we bring amendments before you all, the Commission, uh, under two circumstances. The first of which is if there is a new program or if the requested movement is greater than 10% of the award. Um, and so uh, for Sherman County, they are requesting to move $23,000. Um, the, the funds themselves are coming from underspending in work crew and uh, underspending in their admin, and then also uh, a result of a vacancy in the outreach mental health counselor. And they propose to spend 3,000 of that $23,000 to partially fund the purchase of a fingerprinting machine to be housed in the sheriff's office. Um, right now, they have to send individuals to the Dalles to get fingerprinted, and that um, proves to be a challenge um, for many of their clients there. Uh, the second piece is to move $20,000 to expand the NORCOR, the, um, the regional jail recidivism reduction program, which is already funded through JRP. And we recommend approval of this amendment request. Great. Any discussion questions for Ian about this uh, amendment request? Hearing none, would uh, someone like to make a motion to move these forward? I will so move. Is there a second? I'll second. Right, we have a motion made by Commissioner Auxier, seconded by Commissioner Beach. 
Uh, Ken, would you please take the roll? Certainly, Chair. Uh, Commissioner Augsir? Yes. Commissioner Beach? Yes. Vice Chair Bovet? Yes. Commissioner Freeman? Yes. And Chair uh, Solomon? Yes. Another unanimous vote, Chair. All right. Uh, next up, we have the uh, Victim Services Advisory Panel appointments. Jerry, if you're all right with it, we have one oh, final oh, amendment. Oh, request. I see we have Tillamook County. Yeah, my bad. Uh, let's go ahead. OK, great. Thank you. Uh, so for Tillamook County, they're requesting three movements of funds, all of which are coming from $22,500 in contractual services from underspending. Uh, they plan to move 3,000 of that to cover housing costs, 1,000 to cover client supplies, specifically bus passes for their clients, and then to move $18,500 for a study to assess gaps and look at cultural responsiveness and equity within the local criminal justice system. This is something that many counties have undertaken. And then Tillamook County uh, is contracting with Portland State University's National Policy Consensus Center, as well as Oregon Solutions, which is something that multiple counties have um, engaged or a, an entity with which multiple counties have already engaged. And I'm happy to answer any questions, but we recommend approval of this amendment request. Great. Any questions for Ian or discussion of this request? All right, would someone like to make a motion to Move this forward. So moved. Uh, is there a second? I'll second that. All right, we have a motion made by Commissioner Beach, seconded by Commissioner Freeman. Uh, Ken, roll call, please. Um, Commissioner Augsir? Yes. Commissioner Beach? Yes. Vice Chair Bobet? Yes. Commissioner Freeman? Yes. And Chair Solomon. Yes. A unanimous vote in favor of Tillamook County's modification. All right, now we can move forward with the Victim Services Advisory Panel appointments. I believe that's you, Ian. It is. Thank you, Chair Solomon. Um, so this is, for many of you, especially long tenured member, this may be new for you, um, but the Oregon administrative rules spells out um, a way in which that the commission can appoint a community based victim services advisory panel of up to nine members that have uh, geographic uh, diversity as well as a knowledge of delivery of victim services as well as a diversity of experiences and different types of victim services. And this panel uh, typically is convened only once or twice a biennium to take a look at the victim services applications. So as a reminder, 10% of all justice reinvestment program funds are allocated to community based nonprofit victim service providers. That's included in the application that counties submit. And historically, this community based victim service advisory panel has been convened every two years to review those applications to lend their expertise to review and ensure that uh, the proposals from the different entities uh, meet the requirements in law and reflect best best practice. Um, so if the commission does make uh, an appointment to this panel or does convene this panel, the panel then makes a recommendation to staff, which we then uh, bring to the commission for final funding approval. Historically, or at least rather these last couple of years, the community based victim service advisory panel has had six members instead of the nine. Um, we have uh, engaged in some outreach uh, statewide with individuals with expertise in this area, and we have three new names to bring before you. Uh, what you see here reflected on my screen are the nine members that we are proposing to have on the community based victim service advisory panel. The names that are in bold. Gil Levy, Justin Chukwu, and Terry Steenberger are our recommendations for additions to the Community-Based Victim Service Advisory Panel. Um, as you can see from uh, 
the organization's experience and region. There is some uh, diversity both in experience as well as uh, uh, geographic spread. And um, we've reached out to everyone here. They're both interested in either continuing or serving new on the Community Based Victim Service Advisory Panel. And um, happy to answer any questions, but we recommend appointment of these three new members. Great. Any questions for Ian or discussion? Well, I, I'll just say I'm thrilled that we're expanding the panel. It is a powerful group of uh, individuals and advocates from the uh, survivor uh, victim services community. Um, is there someone who would like to make a motion to approve the appointment of the three new members? I will move to approve the appointments. Is there a second? Happy to second that motion. Right. We have a motion from Commissioner Freeman, seconded by uh, Vice Chair Bovet. Uh, Ken, roll, please. Yes, Chair. Um, Commissioner Augsir? Yes. Commissioner Beach? Yes. Vice Chair Bovet? Yes. Commissioner Freeman? Yes. And Chair Solomon? Yes. It's rounding us out with another unanimous vote, Chair. Excellent. All right, Ken, do we have um, any further business? Uh, that is our entire agenda today, and we were able to motor through. Um, I think all I'd like to do is just remind folks that our next meeting is on July 27th at 1, and we will be considering the um, um, grant requests, basically the funding requests for our specialty court grant program. So that will be the primary item on our agenda. We may throw one or two others on there, but um, a pretty important meeting as we get money awarded to our specialty courts. And will we be meeting in person? Uh, we're not planning on an in-person meeting for that for this coming meeting. Um, our hope is to do an in-person meeting for our justice reinvestment approvals coming a little bit later this year, but uh, more to come. Um, we'll, we'll present that and, and maybe some future meeting dates to try to get that on the calendar at our meeting coming up in a week or so. All right. And uh, as a matter of practice, I, I don't recall whether we generally uh, require a motion to adjourn. Uh, traditionally, we have not. Um, okay. it, I think it's been under the chair's purview to uh, to let us go. <laughs> uh, well, I will exercise <laughs> that that authority and uh, appreciate one of the things I like to do is keep us on time and we're one minute under. So thank you all for your time and look forward to seeing you all at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you all. Yep. Take care.